Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I don't know what's all going on here. But what I will tell y'all is that, listen up. This is about as real as it's going to get. So, John, now, a lot of y'all saw this on The Breakfast Club or mostly on YouTube. I watched Kwame Brown's live and I hadn't even seen this episode because I don't, one, I don't watch The Breakfast Club. Now, he said notification definitely went out. Well, then I'm very happy for that. I'm happy if the notification actually went out some people uh, it's been very limited around here but um, let's speak about it now when we look at the breakfast club we think about Charlemagne we think about we think about um, We think about all of the things that's on the table. Yeah, I do give about a couple of five minutes because, you know, people don't really get their notifications on time. Now, here's the problem. Charlemagne, with his think pad, whatever. He knew Larry Elders is coming on this show, right? People normally don't allow Larry Elder on their platform. Do you know why that is, Charlemagne? You know, you do a good job and having on both sides because he's not a politician. He says, I'm not a politician. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. Bull it. You are a protector of the Democrats when it suits you best. The only time you came after the Democrats is when you felt they didn't do something for you that they promised. And when they got in the White House and got elected, you won't decided to take the other road of saying, well, I'm gonna show I ain't biased and tried to attack the Vice President of the United States. And that was not very smart of you. Now, Let's get back to the gist of this. Here is how he was able to school Charlemagne. He knows what he's talking about. You think the toughest interviewer he was gonna ever be faced with is this guy. Did you all believe Charlemagne the God would be the toughest interviewer he's ever faced. This man goes against college kids, people who have AIDS, who have prepared for him. They've had four or five weeks to study. They have teams come together to battle him for a 30 minute segment. For many segments, they come together you think Charlemagne was gonna be the one to take him down? Charlemagne is a hack, people. He don't conduct interviews that shake the world. He don't have questions to ask them that's gonna shake the world. He's always been a hack. He get all his information normally from Twitter or what used to be Twitter. He had them come up with his jokes and steal them and bring them on the show. They create the donkey of the day and he take all their jokes and come on in the next morning and he's been getting over from it. 
Now, Larry Elders, right? Everybody's held in him as a hero. Now, I don't agree with a lot of things Larry Elder says because Larry Elder, to me, is a protector for the Republican Party. That's his main goal and agenda. He runs under a blanket of this is what's best for black people by saying, uh, attacking the democratic system. If black people don't like something he's doing as a Republican, he points out the fact that, hey, the Democrats started it. Oh, they did this. Oh, they did that. When he burst out, Charlemagne went there to try to embarrass him. And once he tried to embarrass him, it went left. Fatherlessness in black America has actually improved. There are more black fathers now who are staying home with the children because they no longer have to leave the household for the woman to get financial aid. They don't send the guy by the house to run the guy out anymore like they did in the 80s and 70s. They don't do that anymore. Now they just give them the money. So believe me, there's a lot of fathers with their children now. There's a lot of fathers who didn't run away, but they're out of work. And then the, the other ones that are away, they're away because they're either dead or in jail. So fatherlessness in black America is a deeper rooted problem. We agree about education and how the Democrats has failed there. The Democrats failed with the with the uh, government assisting program. They was they started a lot of these things, but the Republicans are the ones who are saying, hey, we don't want them to have that much, but we do want them to have government assisted living because if they don't have government assisted living, what do you think those people are gonna do? They're gonna come to the plush suburbs of whoever's living nice and they're gonna come take it. They're not gonna starve to death. They're going to be like, we got all the weapons. We got everything here. Why not come and take it? Y'all just don't want them to have so much. The Republicans. You see, Charlemagne isn't equipped to answer any of these questions. Because Charlemagne himself knows he's just a puppet. He thought he was going to land his blows and it was going to shock him. Oh, did you get your Negro wake up call? <laughs> he was like, I don't need a white man. You let a white man come on your show and tell you you ain't black if you don't vote for him. You should have been insulted by that, Charlemagne. Why weren't you? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> You see? You see how that went? He didn't have a response for that because he didn't know that that mirror was going to get flashed back on him so fast. He didn't know how to respond to that. That question was too real and hit home too hard. When you have something that hit that hard, he couldn't say nothing now. So all your little internet buzzing question, now to the young folks on the internet, he just made a, a blow on you without even having to disrespect you. He's telling you, he was, well, how should I have answered that? How, you need another man to tell you how to talk? You need another man to teach you what you should say. As a black man answering back to a white man, you how should I say it? If a black man would have said that to you, 
You would you ask another black man? Oh, how should I respond? Yes, because uh, there's a political prison system and they need to evaluate who are the owners of this political prisons systems or this private prison systems that they keep opening up new prisons and look at the number of the inmates that are in jail uh, based on their crimes and what have they done, an economic prison system that's been going on and who are some of the people who are attached to it. And you're gonna find out some of these most prominent people in Hollywood, um, people who own sports teams. And you'll see like these people are behind a prison system that incarcerates Latinos and African-Americans the most out of anybody. And it's like, wow, that's crazy. Because statistically it's speaking that it's more white people with a higher crime than record than anybody else in the United States. Right? Well, we're the ones that's mostly incarcerated. And you might say, well, why? How is that number that high? That number is that high because of a simple fact is the number is going to stay that high for a reason. And that reason is quite simple. There's more white people on this United States of America than it is black and Latinos. Mm. Well, they they really weren't prepared. Charlemagne knew he wasn't going to be prepared enough to have this kind of discussion. You know, his discussions and interviews is mostly like, "Yo, <laughs> uh, what you think about uh, Beyonce's new album uh, and her concert and the dress she wore and her nails." <laughs> You know, like that's that's the degree of his level of conversation. So they bring in a girl named Teslin Fiagro. And then she said, let's just remove the word racism. That seems to be a word that triggers you. That triggers you. And then he talks about the system and agreeing that the the black the family of the black family should certainly have some room for improvement but let's work on the systems so they're trying to get to systematic racism and said the system encouraged black women to be single mothers and he said no the welfare system has created that to be single mothers which is true and the democrats started it so he wants to throw the blame on the Democrats. But what would be his plan if he was to get in the White House? Since you want to attack that notion. Remember I told you education The reason why education is bad, like he said, the Democrats, they praise the school system and all of this, but all their kids go to private school, right? We just did this on One Crack News. Well, Farrakhan can't be anti-Semitic 
when he is Semitic himself. That doesn't make any sense. Do I like Larry Elder? Um, I understand him. I don't agree with a lot of things that he say because um, some of the things he says, he's correct. Some of the things he says, he's incorrect. Because systematic racism, the man tried to say it doesn't exist anymore. Where the hell did it go? Let me tell you about Larry Elder. Um, let me tell you what he believes. Systematic racism, for those who don't understand what that means, that means as far as in the workforce, uh, you're being stereotyped because of the color of your skin in every aspect in the system, the workforce, housing, everywhere. I've shown you black people have to put white people in their homes, take their pictures down, have their white friends come over for the appraiser to come over to and praise their home. And they're getting different light years, hundreds of thousands of dollars in differences when the houses are being appraised. So if the appraisal system is systematically still the same, and I did this like last year, I did this like two years ago. I've talked about this forever. So when he says it doesn't exist anymore, and you know what he said? Oh, well, if you look at the numbers, there's the same amount of unemployed of black as it is white people. White people make 30% more than blacks in the same job titles in the same county. Okay? They have the same titles, same county, right? So they're in the same state. So they're in the same county. Some even in the same city, same job title, white person gets the job, they're 30% higher pay than blacks. So if a black man is making 45,000 a year and he's laid off and a white man is making 65,000 a year or 70,000, and he's laid off. All he see is black man laid off, white man laid off, one and one. But you and I know that isn't the same. That's how you fool the masses with the numbers you put out there. That's where me and Larry Elder disagree the most. Because I see systematic racism everywhere. It's, it's even more heightened now than it's ever been in his life. But see, Charlemagne doesn't know how to answer a man like Larry Elder. Because he's more of a puppet. He doesn't know how to answer these type of questions or even be involved in these kind of conversations and interviews. So when you see Charlemagne interview with some of these politicians, you know it's a Mickey Mouse show because he hasn't prepared. He hasn't done any research. He doesn't care about anything. He's a bootlicker himself to power. So what can he teach you? What does he know? He knows nothing. Who you think Larry Elder is talking about when he's talking about running for president? Why is he on the Breakfast Club? Because the Breakfast Club is the only place that would blow him up. And he knows this will get back to his white constituents. He's not trying to get African Americans because if you're going to think you're going to get the African American vote, especially from black women, you're not going to get a vote. And believe me, 
if the black woman ain't voting, the black man better not come home if he votes for elder. <laughs> Trust me, black families is not going to vote for elder. No black woman is going to vote against having anything about her reduced. And especially by a black man. You going to take away some of her welfare? She's going to vote for you for that. And then the man she with, if he starts talking about man, the elder was saying something. Why? Damn, I just said he said something right. <laughs> Be like, you can go to you can go to uh Jermaine house. Yeah, you're gonna sleep over there tonight. Why? Because I said he said something right. So take him out, take him my money is right, right? Okay, well then you can't eat. Because Larry Elder wanna take the food out your mouth. Damn. You only come over here on the second. Or the third anyway, or the seventeenth, because you know I already got paid and I done bought groceries. You ain't even help me put the groceries in. You wait till I come and buy it and load it up, then you come over here to eat it all up. That ain't even the truth, babe. No, that ain't. Them just them just the days I have available. <laughs> so that's the avenue that they're going to push. That's the agenda. That's the button, that's the hot topic, as they would say. Hot topics, this is the hot topic that they have that's on the table right now. Right, he tried to make it seem as if what Donald Trump did is the same as what Hillary Clinton did when she lost the election. When Hillary Clinton lost the election, right, people were mad that they lost. They didn't storm the White House. They didn't shame people out of their jobs and made their lives in danger. They weren't, people weren't getting death threats because Hillary Clinton didn't win. The things that Donald Trump did and was done doing under his a lot more hostile and violent as it is now. And was stoking the fire. So what Larry Elder seems to do is omit all that and say, well, Trump didn't do anything in the 20, the Russian election and all of these things. What about January 6th? What about all these other things that he definitely has a hand in. They got it from his email. He's got all these files at home. Look, both sides are dirty. Okay? Both sides are dirty. The whole game is corrupt. Whoever gets in that office will not be allowed to help you do a damn thing because it's a committee of people that has to make that decision. So if Larry Elder is in that seat in position, it's not like Larry Elder gets to make a decision. He can present things to the public and tries to sway it over to make America's feel comfortable. But there is a political table where the, these generals and governors and people of power and political power, they come together to make these decisions and you will not be a part of them. So election is not your protection. If you think election is your protection, then you are ready to die. Because there is nobody you're going to elect that they're going to let get in there and make those changes. Generals would have to be removed. People in position of power is not going to relinquish this power. And the strong man you sent in there is not going to break a systematic problem. One man is not going to do that. You have to get in there and infiltrate the entire system to change it. And they're not going to allow that. See, they vet people when you start talking the United States of America. Well, they got her because she's a political person and they call her up to come and help Charlemagne with this interview.
you know, you start talking Jim Crow, you start talking about all of these topics that Charlemagne can't can't sit there and hold a conversation with. And he's got a computer right in front of his face. He's got a laptop with all the questions written down in front of his face. And he just sounded so lost. Charlemagne, only thing he could say, well, what do you think about all the mass shooters? Like, the mo most of them are white. <clears throat> That's because 60% of the population in the United States of America is white. That's not even the problem, Charlemagne. Look at mass shooters, period. Take black and white out of it. What was the thing that they had in common? Mostly all of them had mental conditions. They were on some type of form of medication and should never have been cleared to have access to a firearm. You see, people, are they omit all of these things. They just want you to focus on the event itself. That's what I'm saying. I see through traps. I see when people want to go and do a misdirection. I see when people want to take things to another level. Yeah, pretty much. You know, it's sometimes the smartest man is the man who has seen more and experienced more you could read something from a book you can't debate a man who's actually lived there who could tell you what it was like because he actually lived through it it's harder to debate that man even if you read the book front to back he was like you can't tell me when it's what it smelled like in the morning at 6 a.m when you step out on the porch and take a deep breath and you smell around you can't tell me what that's like i know what it's like I, i've lived it there's certain things that you ain't going to just find in a book. And before there was scholars and teachers, the man who got knowledge got it from just walking and observing the earth. Socrates, one of the smartest men they've said, right? Greek Socrates, man, his philosophy is incredible. Well, Socrates got that from walking and experiencing, talking to different people and exploring the earth. See, when you learn your own historical background, instead of just going on Ancestry.com saying I'm 30% Cambodian, I'm 28% this, I'm 30% that. Learn about your history. Do you, because if you do, you know there's no such thing as a Puerto Rican or an American or a Mexican or English man, Dominican. These are the names of the land. And they're naming you after the land. Well, who were you before they named it that then? The land is called Puerto Rico. So the people are just called Puerto Ricans. What were they before you named it Puerto Rico? What were the people then? No, it's not funny, it's sad. 
because this is what they use to keep you confused. So you don't know and don't research who you are. You, you Chinese, oh, because you live in China. You're named after the country. Japan, oh, so you're Japanese. They name you after the land. Give you a flag and say, There's this is what represents you. What were you beforehand? Uh, somebody often asked me, he said, if black people was in Africa and all, how did they get all the way up here to North America then? I'm like, how did anybody else get to where they got to? They traveled. But they weren't selling in boats. How you know that? Didn't you not realize land used to be connected? before it all broke apart and when it's in the currents of the rivers and the waters push things further away from each other. Hawaii and Japan gets closer and closer each year. And you're under your taught faulty information. You believe everything just split at the same time. You probably grew up watching the land before time, right? And all the dinosaurs fell down and died because of the land split and all of that, right? The earth split up all at one time and then everything, not everything broke away at the same time. Go look and see what country was connected to the United States from San Francisco. A country was connected there. Go research that. And you don't have to take my word for it. You don't have to say it's a conspiracy theory. We have the physical evidence to prove that it was connected. And it was a tunnel system. They had the tunnel all built up and it had the artifact going all the way over to where it ends. And it continues in that other country where that tunnel continues. So you can see where it broke off at. So at one time that were con it was connected together. And join it and go all the way through San Francisco. Thousands of years ago. See, these are the conversations they don't tell you about because they don't want you to research your history. When you have a knowledge of knowing who you are, it empowers you because people can't lie to you. The unknown is removed. It's hard for me to tell you something if it's true, if you know it to be true. If you saw the movie uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Commando, and I'm sitting there trying to tell you Arnold Schwarzenegger died in the movie. Like, oh, he died in the movie. He died halfway through the movie. You was like, I saw that movie. What are you talking about? I saw it. So I know how it ends. No, you 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 don't you saw something faulty. You probably missed it. 
Like, no, I saw it all the way in. Can one tell you that Arnold didn't die in the movie? Because you saw it. So you you don't have to believe you know what happened. Now, someone who didn't see the movie will have to say, I either believe you or don't. Because they don't have any proof. They don't have any evidence. So what you've been robbed of is your state of knowing. So it was harder to fool people back then because they knew who they were. They couldn't tell them the lies to get them to believe something different about who they were. They knew who they were and where they came from. They knew their existence. Now, over thousands of years, we're the lost sheep because we don't know who we are. There have been many pilgrimages here, but we've always been here, period. Before they started enslaving us, we already were here. The first presidents of the United States or the first presidents in this country, the first like, was it eight or 16 are black. They were Moors. And Abraham Lincoln and the rest of these guys, uh, before that happened, George Washington, who became the first president of the United States. All the states united and agreed that we need to have one president. And they stabbed the Moors in the back, screwed them over. And when they say chop the head of the cherry tree, George, he chopped the head off the cherry, he chopped the cherry tree down. It, that was a metaphor. He never chopped a tree that had cherries in it. Can I tell a lie? I did it. George, he never told a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> the Moors from Morocco, they normally had the red ferrets on their head. The cherry red ferrets. They wore those. So... He chopped down the cherries. He betrayed them. And once he was president of the United States, they went to war. The White House looks just like the White House, the house that they have in Morocco. is designed to look like it. They've copied everything from the Moors. The Moors told them how to do that. But that was the punishment for the Moors who sat here and saw blacks being enslaved in chains and working, and they did nothing to try to help or free them, saying they thought they were big or better and saying, well, I'm a Moor. I cannot be a slave. No, he was the first organized president. Before that happened, this place was Indian, um, what we would call more, mostly uh, Israelites. Moors, I mean, we, we had black Irishmen here. See, the countries that you know of, it's not the countries that you see today. There were black Moors everywhere. Moors were the first people to sail. You know the Raiders logo? The skull and bones? That one it used to be a black flag with the skull and bones with the cross on it 
that came from the Black Moors. They were the first ones to have a boat to sail. Christopher Columbus did not sail America and found out that the earth was round. How do you know that? Because if you go and look at the map, the artwork that shows him going on that pilgrimage, on that table is a damn globe. Everyone misses that. In the painting where he's getting ready to go out on sale to prove and that the that the earth isn't flat, it's round, there is a globe sitting already on the desk. So why would if there's a globe already, why the hell he needs to go out to prove that the earth isn't flat? Of course not. The, the earth is an orb. It's not flat. It's not round. It's an orb. Well, we went into slavery because we were betrayed. Um, our, our need for greed, gold and power, and this is how the people who were in charge, the majority of them, the very best and brightest, was told a lie. The 40 acres and a mule, that was the lie that was helped penetrated by our cousins, right? Our Arab Indians, you know, that used to be all called Persia before it was split and turned into different names and different lands. All of that area was called Persia. You ever heard of the movie, The Game Prince of Persia? The Persian army and all of this? Persia used to be the whole continent almost. So they took the money, saw the money to remove us of power so that they could be in charge of Israel. Israel was in Egypt was power. So you have to learn about your history and know who you are to know why do you think that's like the greatest resource in the world? They want to go there and they want to own it. So they cut a deal and they thought they were going to run everything. But that's not what happened. They sent their other Europeans in there and the deal was severed and they said, we're gonna send our people in there and they will be the representatives of this land and they're going to run Israel. And the Palestinians was what they're known as now, was not happy. They've been betrayed. They helped get out the real tenants, the real children of Israel, which is our kind and pushed us into slavery. They helped assist that. And they said, wow, we did that because we were going to help run it for you. Oh, no. They have to put people in there they trust. You just betrayed your own cousins, your own neighbors. You betrayed them after they let you into Egypt. So it's a lot of stuff you need to learn, buddy. If you own the Carcino for Life Patreon, you will get that education. Told you I had a real world life education. And when you have an education such as mine, you see that the world is a lot bigger than what they tell you. You know not to believe certain lies. So you can see through a liar right away. No matter how pretty they tell the story, you look right at it, you know it's a lie or deception, or they're trying to misdirect the questions by not asking it.
Well, you have to understand, there wasn't a lot of unity back then. Light-skinned black and dark-skinned black have always been in conflict, even all the way to the 1900s. It does not matter, people. This has been a universal problem because people decided that they were going to use this as a way to weaken us by mixing the race, to delude us and grow a new race out of that. One is more docile, one is more subservient to their ways. Too dark to be considered white, too light to be considered black. They're ostracized by both, so they are confused and they have no one to cling to but other people such as themselves. So no fault of it of theirs, they're just the, the wanderness. They just wander around the world. They had their own tribe. They were called different names then. They weren't allowed in Egypt. The day Egypt decided to let them into Egypt, it brought down Egypt. When we mean brought in there, we mean to live. People would sail overseas to come to Egypt to learn. They had to learn and, and study and they would come in from Germany, from Romania, a lot of these places. Um, they came over there for the Western region. They would come there and, and have dinner. It's all documented <clears throat> as guests, and they will learn. They wanted to know how to structure. All the best architects came from Egypt. They didn't have all the state-of-the-art technology we have now. They used the sun. They used mathematics and knowledge of the earth to do measurements and their measurements are precise. If you look at some of the work and the pen, the craftsmanship on what they did, some of the things they built, it's like, it would, you would think it's a 15, like who designed this? because they had true knowledge. They didn't have plasma TVs. They didn't have all these things. They didn't need them. I'm light skinned too. They would have hunted me down as well. Um, Dark skinned blacks or the aborigines, um, people in Israel, they used to hunt them down and eliminate light skinned blacks. Here in slavery, um, you had a lot of women that were taken advantage of during slavery by their slave masters who would sneak in their quarters take them and have their way with them. When they have the child, the black man would tell them, do not have that baby, do not. And the mother's attached to it because she's had this baby for nine months. So it's a harsh, the, the, the world history is dark. It's not pretty. It is ugly and violent and vile. 
And mixed in there is hope, struggle, love, fighting forward to push the envelope forward. Our ancestors said we will be avenged by our great, great grandchildren, our great children. They will change this. So we got to endure this so that our children come up. They going to find a way. They going to learn the language. They are going to adapt and they are going to take down our oppressors. Nope. Now we'll do anything for a Louis bag. Oh yeah, you go to school there. You get more than timelines. You have actual photographs. You have actual things that we can't talk about here on YouTube. Mostly everything we said here that it was on the Patreon two years ago. And still there. You're going to learn your history. You're going to learn the history of Christianity. You're going to know the history of the Catholics. You're going to know the history of all of these religions that came to form around something they don't even understand, but they want to market it. The Holy Crusades, what they call the Holy Crusades, was a war of them going around slaughtering people, saying this in the name of God, just to get them to bow to their beliefs. So everything that they believed in was wiped out. Look at the United States. 1900, 1899. The Philippine USA War. How many of y'all even know we went to war with the Philippines? After helping them in the war, right? We helped them in the war. They were our allies. And as soon as the war is over, we turned around and said, well, they're weak enough. Let's just, since we're here, let's take over. And when the United States, they were so decimated, they were fighting a war because they did not want to be Catholic. They didn't want to change their religion. They didn't want to have to bow down to that. And when they left, what was one of the rules? The religion had to be Catholic. It had to become Catholic. And now you see Catholic religion almost everywhere, right? Maximilian went into Mexico from Spain, invaded Never Cinco de Mayo. When they fought back, the farmers did and won. Yeah, but Maximilian came back with more ships and it was way more violent. All their religious things, the texts, my texts, Aztecs, There were blacks there too. Whoa, black tribes fighting alongside with the Mexican brothers because they originate there. They never tell you any of this. Why? Then they became Catholic. But if you ask them now, they think it's their religion. That's what they do and buy it, take over. Now,
Yes. Um, one Mexican president helped free slaves was um, the president of Mexico. He was um, half black and half Mexican and he helped free slaves here in the United States. They would trade for goods. The Mexicans would come here and trade goods with the slave owners here in the United States. And blacks, we were very smart. The slaves knew and they followed the tracks of the wagon. They were able to not know where they were in this country, but knew going with that Mexican man is better than what we live then here. They would follow the tracks of the wagon and see and trace it to the direction. Because as you know, we come from, we come from different places, but we come from a lot of different areas in the world. And what you didn't know, there's a lot of places in this world where the Omex, which you keep hearing about the Omex, there are a lot of different uh, things that you didn't know about. And some of the brothers I know and I spoke to over the years decided to see was I lying. No, it is, it is true. In Mexico, um, you have what they call Santiago. Where they're more darker, like Oaxaca. This is the museum for the black. the black Hispanics in Mexico that honor their tribe. Like, see no man, you was right. I came here, bruh, and I made this video. <laughs> see though, you was right. Why don't the world show this museum? They don't advertise this museum. They don't show you none of these things. Artifacts from our tribe. El Negro.
We have plenty of other. He was called the black. Even the guy who hosted it was like, yeah, man, that's a brother. That's a black man right there. Yeah, that's a black man. Dude, he had the dog on high top fade. Look at his lining. He couldn't be nobody else. That's the tribe he came from. I wonder who his barber was. Oh man, he looked like somebody I know right now. I just saw him on 55th. He was right outside the dog on Cisco, the Cisco uh, gas station. And he was an all Mac. Now, as I tell you, there's information. Now, the thing you should be wanting to ask yourself is why they don't talk about that? What happened to Puerto Rico? He told you about what happened to Puerto Rico. Everybody on the island of Puerto Rico was darker than my tires. Now they look like Spaniards, right? What happened there? Oh, yeah, see, they document everything in Mexico, and it was submerged, but they found it. You see the brother, look at him, got him a Jennifer Lopez already. Brother, like, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, they was on it way back when, baby. Let's go, baby. So they show the history of these tribes. They show the battle, they show them fighting. So do you see right there, you see the invaders from Maximilian, that's them, the invaders, coming there to fight and take the land. See the cat getting the hell up out of there? They like, we out. You got cats running. You got all these things happening, right? All this back door action. Now, the most famous Olmec, right, out of all of them, and people have revered him, is this one right here. That's the most famous Olmec here. The one of the most featured, and he must have been someone of great importance because they said, we must keep him stored. But they never show you these, do you? You never saw this, did you? But that's undeniably who they are.
I look more like that damn old man than a bunch of Mexicans. <laughs> so let that sink in. Ethiopians, people from Ethiopia, had migrated up there. So you have ancestors from Ethiopia. They spoke the dialect. <clears throat> and most of them had the Ethiopian facial traits from people that had been in that land. That's how they was used to identify people. That's why they blow the noses and stuff off a lot of artifacts and you're confused because you can't really tell who's who and what's what. Yes, you see, most of those people during wars, they went in deep into the mountains, deep, way out, so that the people wouldn't come and just kill everybody there and make them go under their rule or enslave them. They retreat, right, into the areas where people just don't even go. And for generations, there were Black people living there way far, far, far and far, far to the land. That's a black woman. Black Mexican. Her generation goes back through the tribes. So somebody see her and tell her, you ain't Mexican, but you're not African. She's, she was in there before that. Her family is from there. There were a lot of different, Aztec tribe is just one of the tribes. There are Mitecs. It's a whole bunch of different tribes. Tech is at the end of all of them. <laughs> so it's Mitech, High Tech, <laughs> uh, Aztec. They worship the Jaguar. Another one worship uh, another uh, animal. When she starts seeing the hieroglyphics and going through the whole history, you will understand that, like, oh, man, the only thing we know about is Aztec. It's the only thing they tell us about. See this? Look at that. This is Mexico. All these people black. Look at that. That's a brother and his family, and he's in power. That's the former president of Mexico, mixed man. He was the ruler. He helped free the slaves and brought them into Mexico because he was mixed. That's the photograph of the slaves migrating from the United States into Mexico. This is in Mexico. These are your Africans in Mexico.
Again, this stuff exists. They know it and they don't tell you about it. So when I hear Larry Elder say these type of things, I say, brother, <laughs> you can't fool me. You are not going to tell me this Eurocentric way of thinking is going to work for me. And that they have my best interest. We've seen their best interests. There's no systematic racism, like it went away. Well, no, her family moved there. She was born in Mexico. Her family is from Africa, but they were living in like New Mexico. And she was born there, so that's why she speaks Spanish so well and fluent. That's Lapita. But yeah, she does speak her African dialect. That's why she was able to speak. Uh, she was so happy she got a chance to speak Spanish when she was... <clears throat> when she was in uh, Black Panther, they gave her a chance to speak her dialect. And that movie is one is the only historical accurate depiction. Of Mexico. You know, they weren't blue people, but <laughs> but you got to see they did not come speaking that language. And this is why they don't really talk about that. As Mark came up and saw the Spaniards conquering their land, teaching them to speak that ridiculous language that isn't theirs. Well, that's why they never spoke it in the movies. They didn't speak Spanish. That was the language they were given by the captors. And this history, a lot of Mexicans know about, but they don't see that ever portrayed here. They only tell you about the Mexico that's what you have. Don't forget to hit the like button. This is a video y'all didn't think y'all were gonna get. This is Patreon material you're getting right here for free. Oh, a lot of visual aids. Larry follows the agenda of the Republican Party. He, where it is to become a uh oh, they coming with the garbage. But the best way to do it is to become a ghost. That's why I tell y'all, make sure you like button, subscribe to this page, hit the notification bell so they can have, and select all notifications so you can not have, they can't have any wiggle room to not giving you the content you want. Well, Larry's telling you what you want to hear, but how's he going to get it? <clears throat>
we elect him, what what's gonna get done? What's actually going to be done? What can you actually acquire? What could you actually get? You're only going to be learning the Eurocentric ways that they want to promote to you. That's it. Charlemagne is someone who's made money off ignorance, who has perpetrated being an African-American male who made money pretending to have homosexual tendencies and pretending to be gay men on the radio and television with DJ Envy. They think it's funny. Other gay people think, it, think, it's, think of it as something. Like they don't see the joke. But the people that listen to them, is 68% African. Well, if you start to ask yourself, what is it that you do better than anyone else as an individual and how you want to help, you can't go in there alone. But if your idea is, I'm going to go in here and support the plan that they already got going. No, it's entirely different. If you want to fix the educational system, your people, your Republicans, and your Democrats, the Republicans need to spend money talking about the actual educational system. Show me a Republican, one of them, that has their children in public school. Show me a Democrat with their kids in public schools. If the system is so great, why won't their children go there? Because it's not, and they know it. And they just want the teachers to stay working, overcrowded classrooms, migrants taking over. Illinois is the worst. They've shut down the most schools here in Illinois, shut them down completely. And now they've brought, dumped all the migrants here at the Florida said, we don't want to take them back. After they decided, and he's like, well, we didn't vote for that. They, they had to say every state had to take a certain number of migrants. 
most of these people are from Venezuela. A war is in Venezuela. A lot of them are Venezuela. Now, those who is escaping Jamaica, some of the migrants are from Jamaica from a war, a drug war that took place over there. Some of the family members escaped and came across the border. So they're not just Mexicans. The news look at everybody as Mexicans. But there are a lot of other people who come into this country illegally that they don't look at. They don't try to say, hey, where's your visa or nothing. And they come from Russia. They come from Ukraine. They come from everywhere else. And it's cool for him them to be here illegally and stay here as long as they want until they get a visa. No one's trying to evict them. Oh, no, Medinska. Ivan Medinska is, he's okay. Everybody else, they got to go. But not old good old Ivan. But Noe Salinas, oh, he's a problem. <laughs> yeah, there's no systematic racism anymore, Larry Elder. It just went away. Larry Elder is not going to go to the White House. He's not going to be on the ballot. He's not going to get on. He can't even get on the stage. One, because he can't even find anybody in his party enough that will support him and put the money up. Who's his target audience? He's trying to use his color base to wake up the blacks with money. Blacks with money who basically don't vote. That's his agenda. His idealisms, um, his thought patterns is generated towards it's generated towards blacks, but It's different. Will he get on the floor to debate? might be because of the breakfast club you see this made the republicans look really good on a basically democratic driven platform so this made larry look really good because he made them look really stupid and no actually he just exploited what they already were that was ignorant to the conversation they didn't, re they didn't research, they just had their insults lined up that they wanted to throw. It's like battling somebody on YouTube. You battle somebody on YouTube who don't really have anything. They can just make up a lie and just roll with the lie, but they never answer any questions because they don't know how. You're there to question a man but you thought the best way to do that was to challenge him with insults. And you had no pushback. You had nobody with any political background in there to prep you properly for somebody like Larry Elder. So what you got is Charlemagne just doing what he's doing, spinning stuff and talking around and talking in circles and he can't have the conversation with Larry Elder.
Exactly. So don't forget to subscribe to Kwame Brown Bus Life. Kwame Brown Bus Life 2.0. Carcino for life. Hopefully you've enjoyed and had a great time learning about things that's happened here in Charlemagne as much of a hack as he is. But... Um, When you vote for who you think is the best fit for what you want. People believe they have to vote in a group. And that is the problem. Everybody having a singular idea about how things work when everyone's lives are completely different. My life is different from my neighbor's life. Okay, we can live in the same neighborhood, but have different ideals about what's best for this earth in this country. Do you think the people who are winning in this country is based on politics? Do you think it is based on politics or who's a Republican and who's a Democrat? Does anyone ask in India who comes here from India? Are they Democrat or Republican? Who they voting for? I bet they walk right past people and no one asks them about their political affiliation because they know that's all bull it. The majority of them aren't voting. You know what they care about? Results. Education is king. The more knowledge you know, the more they can't screw you over. They speak multiple languages at the age of six and seven. Not because they, they is fashionable, they want to look smart. No, because they have to do it for survival. There's people over there poor than, than you can ever imagine, but they're smart as a whip. Mathematics, they've been doing tricks since they were eight. Calculus, that's a homework project. They've been bouncing and counting numbers for years and you, they don't even want to teach you math. Because if you teach people math, they learn how to save. They know not to be stupid and buy things that are way expensive. You got on $300 Jordans and a dog on $200 belt, but you got a job that pays you $35,000 a year. Sounds real stupid, don't it? When you say it out loud, but they know it and they still do it because they haven't been taught mathematics. They haven't been taught how to be productive citizens. They haven't been taught how to save money. I was fortunate to learn from Indian people that lived around me. Their children played with us outside playing basketball. I've learned about their culture, things that they're not gonna tell you on television. I learned their system. They have a system when they come here. They get money, they get granted. Everybody comes over here, the government gives them money. So when they come over, they have a place to stay. The majority of these people, they don't go to four-year university. Some of them do to get their doctorates. Most of them have them in India already, and they make them go to college again when they get here. They go to a business college and spend two years in a business college. If you spend two years in a business college, that is the experience that you could put on your resume to go anywhere. And then you have experience in the field because what they do is they will put you to work there. I already told this story many times. My friend, his family, they own the chain of Dunkin' Donuts. They had a Dunkin' Donuts restaurant. They brought a family member over. They put him up, room and board. He doesn't pay any money. 
doesn't pay rent. His job is to save money. He goes to college free. He works at the job that they have. They give him a job there and he's to shadow and learn what the owner is, has to do in the day. That's his job. And then he goes to business college and for two years, he's saving his money. He's got free food, free roof, roof over his head. And then in two years, the guy applies for a loan, puts down a deposit from the money he's been saving and he gets his own Dunkin' Donuts in two years. Now he's got his Dunkin' Donuts in two years from, from being brought in, shadowed the whole organization for two years, went to business college as he was working there for two years. Now he got the loan money. He's got enough for a down payment. He's going to put it down and get his own Dunkin' Donuts. He wasn't buying Jordans. He ain't say, man, I'm going to kick it. They have a plan to own, not to be a worker. How do you think they got the gas stations? They got a friend over in India that just hooked them up. They got the gas stations because they knew what they were doing. There's a black woman that owns a couple of gas stations. And even though they built other gas stations right across the street from her, people would go to the black woman's uh, sicko. She got a sicko gas station and shop and say, why? Because she's personable. She knows the people that come there. She makes sure the coffee's fresh every morning. She knows everybody. Hey, how's Linda? How's everybody? So she's very personable. So they would go there because they get treated like stars when they walk over there. So they will always spend their money at that gas station. But that lets you know there's no monopoly on it. She saved her money. She researched how to get the gas station. You could put down this deposit. You can go to the bank, get a loan for it, and get approved for the rest. We just don't have a plan. Wasn't who she voted for that got her that. You think the Indian guy, it was the who he elected, got him where he's going? Crack open that internet, just like we just had a very good educational um, video right here today. You got to see things that you probably never saw before in your life and learn things that you never knew about in life in this one video right here. If this doesn't inspire you to crack that internet open that you already own and start looking into the world and say, well, man, there's a lot I don't know. This should open your eyes to say, I got to get into the game. Stop trying to be a rapper. Stop trying to be an actor. Okay? I mean, if that's your drive and your desire, fine. But we got to expand. How about being the record producer or, or the owner of the label? How about being a film producer or opening your film studio? That sounds a lot more attractive to me than coming in as the actor, coming in as this, because it don't happen. If you're sitting on your couch thinking, I'm just gonna bust some rhymes, that's just a good way to get yourself killed and go to jail and in debt. Most rappers are broke. They live a very high lifestyle and they live in on loans and they have no money. A lot of them. They have access to money, but they spend it. The baby mother gets more out of it than they do. And then they have all these children and then they're shot, killed somewhere, robbed, dead and gone. And then the baby mother's out here trying to figure out how she's going to keep her lifestyle while they're eating off of your estate.
and the record companies putting out all the songs of unreleased material you got and raking in all of the millions of dollars by paying off pennies to your family. Meanwhile, people that never knew you existed, never showed up at your funeral, don't even know you're dead, is going on trips off of your sweat and tears and creative ideas. The CEO of Interscope with Ted Fields, whatever, his daughter got married, went to, flew across, they had her reception party across the country off of Tupac's money. Tupac record sales was paying for her wedding, her flying over. So we have to change our model of thinking. We should want to be the executives, the owners. We want to have our own business and have it be profitable. How do we do that? You have the highest school in the world in front of you. You have the computer. Everything is in front of your face. Use it for that. Stop going on four websites a day. Stop going on Facebook, the gram, TikTok, YouTube. You know, it's like you're you're wasting your time not getting the right information. There's a the, it's all there on the internet now. They're not going to tell you about it, but it's there. So go be great. I'm out.